Hello, and welcome to the deflasking lecture for RESD 1211, Complete Dentures 2 course in the Restorative Dentistry Department of New York City College of Technology. My name is Professor Oscar Galvis. If you're taking this lecture, it means that you have already taken the lecture on packing and processing. If not, please revert back to last week's session in Blackboard. At this point, you should already have processed dentures, but they still remain in your flask. Now we need to retrieve the denture and the model from the flask. Let's begin. The objective of the deflasking procedure is to remove the denture from the investment material without breaking the denture or dislodging the denture from the cast. You want to ensure that the denture flask and its contents have reached room temperature before deflasking. Equipment needed includes a plaster knife, two chisels, a flask ejector unit, and a plaster saw. It should be noted that the methods seen in this presentation are directly correlated to the methods used in the Air Force Manual. Removing the investment mold and denture from the flask. So the first thing you want to do is remove the flask from the carrier press. Once again, make sure that the flask is cooled down already. You don't want to touch this when it's piping hot. Then you're going to remove the lid of the flask with a plaster knife using the notch that's located on the back of the lid. The flask ejector. So in order to use the flask ejector, the lid must be removed from the top portion of the flask. Then you will place the flask in the ejector unit with the knockout plate facing up. Close the unit and pass the chisels through the holes in the sides of the ejector into the slots between the two halves of the flask similar to the notch that you saw when you removed the lid. Using inward and downward pressure, apply force until the halves of the flask come apart. The chisels act as levers, and the sides of the ejector units are the fulcrum. Pull the handles of the chisel up in the other direction to separate the mold from the flask completely. The next step is to pry off the occlusion cap to expose the cusp tips and incisal edges of the denture teeth. This was the reason why we did multiple pours during flasking. When you deflask, it is paramount to be able to see the location of the denture within the investment material. Your next step is that in the right and left canine areas and the right and left distal ends, you're going to cut outer walls of the stone mold with a plaster saw from top to bottom. Once again, having the visual of the denture aids you in the ability not to saw into your denture. Once the cuts have been made, you can pry the section stone mold away from the facial surfaces of the denture with a plaster knife. If the cuts are not deep enough, this will be a very difficult task. Be sure to cut deep enough that the stone pries off, but not too deep that you have broken or cut into your denture. As the stone pries off of the denture, you can now see how well your flasking procedures were done. Any bubbles or stone stuck to the denture could have resulted from poor flasking or poor preparation during boil out and preparation procedures. Before trying to remove the investing stone from the maxillary palatal area or mandibular tongue space, Trim the stone away from the lingual surfaces of the teeth. This trimming helps reduce the possibility of the denture lifting off the cast when the inner portion of the mold is removed and also guards against fracturing the denture teeth. This is very important. It's common to rush and try to pry this portion out in one piece and at many times when the denture is thin, it will fracture the denture base or fracture a tooth. Take out the intersection of the maxillary or mandibular mold in a way that does not dislodge the denture from the cast. It is very important that the denture stays seated onto the model. 
A way to do this is by sectioning that palatal or lingual tongue space with a plaster saw. Once again, be careful not to cut into the denture base or the teeth. You can see here how easily it is removed once it is bisected. At the point of deflasking, it is the moment to assess your flasking, your boil out, and your preparation procedures. In flasking, we use two different methods. One flask was done with a laboratory putty, and one was done with all stone. The mandibular was done with all stone. You can see how there are bubbles and voids and stone stuck to the facials of the denture, while the maxillary was with the use of laboratory putty. I think it's easy to see that laboratory putty maintains the anatomy and detail that was done during the wax phase better than stone. Finally, you want to clean away any remaining plastic bubbles or dental stone residue from around the denture teeth. After deflasking, leave the denture firmly seated on its cast. If there is the slightest trace of wobble or other evidence that the denture has come loose from the cast, the dentist must decide if the case can be transferred to the articulator for remount. It is very important that the model stay intact and the denture stay attached to the model. The next process is that we must check the occlusion of the dentures and check for processing errors after this deflasking procedure. The only way to do that properly is to ensure that the model is in one piece and that the denture is still attached to that model. Your readings for this week are from pages 316 to 318 and that covers everything to do with deflasking. Please take time to check your laboratory section on Blackboard for more instructional videos and more content on deflasking. Thank you for your time. See you next week.